Well, I'm joined here in the studio by James Creedon with today's edition of Truth or Faith. Hi, Tom. Welcome to you, James. Um, let's begin by looking at a tweet from the Russian embassy in the UK that's actually been taken down. What's this about? So this is Twitter uh, doing, I suppose, the, the work of, 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 of fact checking, really, and, uh, and weeding out uh, content that they believe uh, to be uh, false, uh, which I suppose from the very beginning has been a controversial uh, practice because I suppose platforms, uh, are, is it their role to determine what is true or not, or just to host uh, or to be a host, a, a platform for the content. But in any case, uh, Twitter and several other social media have already uh, gone, uh, have already crossed that Rubicon, if you like. And here, uh, a tweet by the Russian embassy in the UK, deemed to be completely false, uh, has been taken down. Now, in this tweet, uh, the, the the accusation that we've heard from other Russian sources as well, uh, that uh, Russian aggression is in fact Nazi a Ukrainian aggression, a, a, a sort of egregious and, and a rather uh, just mind-boggling uh, mistruth. It was used by the uh, Ukrainian armed forces and radicals, namely the neo-Nazi Az Azov Battalion. So here, uh, the accusation there again that uh, the attack on a maternity hospital in Mariupol was not conducted by the Russians, uh, but was conducted uh, by a Ukrainian, Ukraine's own forces. Uh, that particular statement there in that tweet has been taken down. Now, uh, you could argue that uh, there's a certain amount of political pressure on uh, a Twitter. Number 10, uh, Downing Street accused the embassy of posting disinformation on Twitter uh, and, and uh, uh, labelled that information fake. And I suppose in the aftermath of that, then uh, Twitter did take it down for violating uh, Twitter rules. Now, interestingly, we're seeing that same line uh, in, in various other uh, guises, in various other forms. This, this on morning television here in France, where Alexander uh, Magognov, of, uh, who is the spokesperson for the Russian embassy in France, pretty much came out with exactly the same line. Who is bombing civilians? The question was asked, and it was Ukrainian Nazi battalions was the answer. So clearly there's a coordination, uh, unsurprisingly, in the talking points from the Kremlin and at, at, at embassies. But uh, we have seen at least one example of those talking points uh, being taken down due to it being determined as fake. OK, and we're used to seeing screenshots being... Uh, doctored and photoshopped. You've got one uh, that seems to be from CNN, but right. clearly isn't really. That's right. So for one big giveaway here should be uh, the misspelling of uh, uh, some of the uh, strapline fiery, but mostly peaceful explosion in Ukraine. So a misspelling, b a rather preposterous and bizarre uh, uh, strapline, fiery but mostly peaceful explosion. I mean, no news editor would ever uh, greenlight that sort of um, that sort of language. And in fact, it, it, it appears to be a text that comes back that has come back previously or that has previously been used in a way to in, in, in a critical manner for uh, rolling news channels. In any case, the accusation here is that this explosion uh, was previously broadcast the exact same image, image back in 2015. Now, Re the Reuters fact checking uh, team that were looking into this particular story, they did a reverse image search and they could not find any copies of that image prior to February of uh, this year, February 2022. In other words, that image, supposedly from 2015, is probably not from 2015 at all. So the strapline was doctored. Everything about this image was doctored. Uh, the the, the in, in, intelligent guess, if you like, of the Reuters team is that this may have started as satire. Yeah, well, also they're calling it the Ukraine, which we don't uh, call it any longer. I mean, there's error upon error. Absolutely. So these are people pretending to fact check and debunk news stories and actually tell right. lies. Or the they were trying to be funny, but, we, but if they were trying to be funny, then it, was, it wasn't explicit, explicitly yeah. humorous. It can't, was can't certainly see anything funny about that. Uh, finally, a satire being taken seriously, though, by uh, with regards to the US-Russia relations. Tell us a bit more. All right, so if, if the previous example was maybe a satire that wasn't clearly enough a satire, in this case, I think it's pretty plain for anybody who's discerning that this is satire, Tom. Biden sells Alaska back to Russia so we can start drilling for oil there again. Now, uh, Alaska was previously owned by Russia, but is it in any way credible that uh, such a transaction would take place between uh, the United States and Russia right now? Now, it, it, it is, I suppose, riffing off elements of fact. Uh, Joe Biden did suspend oil leases in uh, the Arctic, uh, in, 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 in Alaska, but this is completely rid ridiculous and preposterous. Now, the USA Today fact-checking team, sort of, did they really need to do this? But they did a bit of fact-checking on it. Some media are sort of poking fun at uh, the whole exercise saying USA Today left no stone unturned. They got to work combing through uh, everything in this article and looking for the truth, Tom. So they did determine that that 
obviously satirical story was indeed satirical. Sometimes maybe fact-checking isn't fully required, just a little bit of cop on. I think I, have one, I might have worked that one out on my own. <laughs> Thank you I very much faith. indeed. Thank Thanks, you, James Creedon, for today's edition of Truth or Fake.